Today's video is sponsored by petflow.com slash Zach George. Today I'm gonna to take some of your questions that you guys asked me on Facebook. I tried to select some really good ones that may apply to a lot of you. Give the video a big thumbs up if you're enjoying the Q&A format. Also make sure you're subscribed so you see all of my future videos. And remember, if you're new to my videos, I'll have a link to a playlist in the description that will show you how to teach your dog the basics in order. That of course is completely free. Now, if you do require an answer from me, you can consider making a contribution to our Patreon campaign. I'll have the details in the description. I've told you about PetFlow.com and how they offer automatic pet food delivery. Basically, you just pick your food and how often you want it delivered. What I didn't realize is that PetFlow also offers automatic delivery of your flea and heartworm prevention. Now, living here on the Gulf Coast in the United States, it's extremely important that the dogs have their heartworm prevention. Since these are prescriptions, I thought it might be more problematic and more kind of a pain to set up, but actually they probably have your vet in a database. You just type in your vet, it comes up. They ask you, is this your vet? You say yes, they take care of the rest and your flea and heartworm preventative is always there when you need it as well. And you can change that schedule or edit it at any time. Ensuring that those preventatives are always there when I need them is fantastic. And for those of you that do opt to set up automatic pet food delivery, just enter code ZAK20 when you check out and you'll get 20% off of your first order. I'll have a link in the description that will show you exactly where you need to go. Okay, we're gonna take our first question here. This comes from Gloria. Hi, Zach, I would like to know what your suggestion is about how often you should do training sessions and how long each training session should be. Thank you. Okay, great question, common question, but I'm gonna answer it probably a little bit differently than other people might answer this question. First, it's important to understand that there are two types of training sessions, largely primary training sessions and secondary training sessions. Primary training sessions are what you might think where you sit down and work with your dog and ask them to sit, stay, lie down, leave it, look at me, and so on. That's where you're really giving your dog your undivided attention, you've set aside some time. Secondary training sessions are where you have to snap into training mode on a moment's notice. Maybe your dog is jumping on the coffee table or jumping on guests or biting the couch cushion or something like that, and that requires you uh, to either get a hold of your dog and put them in an environment where they can't perform the behavior or go into a secondary training session. This is what you'll have to make up your mind on a case by case basis. Obviously you have to pick your battles. This will vary from dog to dog, but on primary training sessions, about five to 20 minutes per training session, three to five times a day. I mean, but again, this is a wide spectrum of dogs. If you get a really high drive dog who can just train and train all day, then you know you can get by with a longer period of time. Then you've got other dogs who are just like, nah, I don't care so much about training right now. Uh, you know, I'll give you five minutes. And so you kind of have to work with them on that and gradually increase the period of time that they're receptive over time. The best way to do that is to make training enjoyable and interesting to them. And you'll have to brainstorm with each dog as to what they like. Obviously keeping your treats very good, something like real meat, real chicken, that's typically what I use. Or even better, if your dog is receptive to play, tug of war and fetch are fantastic ways to get some extra mileage out of your training sessions. As far as secondary training sessions go, well that depends more on you and if you're willing to give your dog the attention they need during those various moments. So if you have company over and your dog is play biting on you and biting your hands and or, and or your company's hands, that means you need to get into training mode, either work with them on a sit stay and give them their rewards as they earn them, or again, just simply put them in an environment where that type of behavior can't take place until you're ready to give them your undivided attention. Uh, dogs don't respond well to an unfocused trainer, so always make sure that you are committed and fully focused on your dog, whether it be a primary training session or a secondary training session. I hope this answers your question. I get this next question all of the time. Anita says, I have a nine week old female English Springer Spaniel. How do I train her to tell me when she needs to go outside to go potty? Uh, I've watched lots of videos, but I haven't seen anything on how to teach this. The short answer is you don't, not at this age. Your dog has so much on his or her plate right now as far as taking in the world, learning how to do the basics, and really trying to learn what's expected of them. You're in the communication building phase right now, which means your communication is very, very limited because you've only had your dog for just, you know, I would assume about a week at the most right now. So your focus needs to be on building communication. What you'll find is that your dog will probably automatically start soliciting you to be let outside as he or she gets older. In fact, they'll probably constantly want to be let out 
if they're anything like my dogs. So what I do is I just let my dogs out every, you know, every three, four hours or so. The bottom line is that it's not your dog's responsibility to let you know when they have to go outside. It's on you to let your dog out hourly for the next several months uh, to get up in the middle of the night if you have to, to let them out. So while they may whimper sometimes to indicate that they probably have to go potty, then that's fine, but you don't want to rely on that. You want to be proactive in the matter and really get them out there as much as you can. With potty training, the goal is to get your dog to prefer a certain type of surface or texture. Uh, in this case, I'm assuming grass. In order to get your dog to prefer grass, you have to take them out on grass often and let them do their business. Reward heavily, let them know how much you love it when they do it, and be very patient. It's common for it to take up to a year to fully potty train a dog. Now, that's not to say that you can't get mostly there in the first several months, but it is likely you'll still have frequent enough accidents. You really don't wanna let your guard down and you wanna consistently and routinely get them outside to do their business. Uh, I hope this helps. It's a really, really good question. This next question comes from Danielle. Uh, she says, my timid dachshund Jack Russell mix has a hard time with social anxieties around other dogs. This is a problem when we go to the vet or the groomers or the pet store because she barks and growls while hiding behind me. Any advice would be appreciated. Usually this is either the result of a dog's natural personality or a lack of socialization at a young age. I don't think you told me how old your dog is. If your dog is really young exhibiting these behaviors, pretty normal. And the answer I'm gonna give you here would apply to whether your dog is young and unsocialized or older and uh, maybe still unsocialized, but either way, this is how we, how I would approach it based on what you've told me. So we don't wanna wait until it's time to go to the vet, the groomer, or the pet supply store in order to get our dog comfortable with being around these situations. In other words, you want to really take a lot of measures, and this, this takes work, but you can get there if your desire is strong enough. The goal is to take your dog around these situations as often as possible. In fact, I'd like to see you go two to three times a week to your local pet supply store or to the vet or to the groomer just to hang around and just desensitize her to what's going on. Of course, bring your treats if she likes to play, maybe try and encourage her to play, though I understand that may be a bit tougher with a dog who's kind of timid in these situations. Uh, so really good treats are probably your best bet. If possible, hang out there for about an hour just running through your drills, sit, stay down, giving her her treats, whatever she knows. And the idea is to create some normalcy in these situations that they typically find stressful. The more time a dog spends around situations that usually stress them out, the less likely they are to react unfavorably or stressed in those settings. Does that make sense? So that's, that's the game plan I would recommend. Now this could take anywhere from a few weeks to a few months to a few years, depending on the severity of your dog's issues. Obviously keep other dogs away from your dog during the, the beginning parts of this in order to prevent any, uh, any type of fear aggression response from your dog. The idea right now is just to create some comfort in these situations and get her listening to you. Now, at first, I don't expect your dog to listen to you while in this type of environment, so give it several minutes, maybe even up to 20 or 30 minutes before you expect her to really listen to you. The fastest way to throw a dog off is to change a major variable on them, like the environment, so be understanding of that. Another great thing that you can do that will help tremendously is to exercise your dog before being in these situations. I know of no better Better way to reduce almost all types of anxiety than by vigorous exercise appropriate for your individual dog of course this next question comes from another Anita uh, Anita says I have a 10 month old dog she chases cyclists and runners and cars she's great on the leash but I can't control her while off leash okay Anita you are probably well it sounds like you're almost certainly making the most common mistake that people with dogs make, which is granting your dog too much freedom too early on. Many have the idea that you go from getting your dog to be reliable while on leash to then immediately getting them to be reliable while off leash. When in reality, between those two events, you have a major span, I would say if it was me, 12 months of serious 
distraction slash proofing training. Proofing means getting your dog to listen to you under a variety of different, even unexpected circumstances. You may also want to consider investing in a long 30 foot lead and a harness so that you can go to a park and practice your dog coming and staying and doing everything they know while in a new environment because a new environment in and of itself is a pretty significant distraction. And then gradually work your way up to your dog listening to you around traffic and cyclists and runners and so on while on leash while in various environments. And this should go on, like I say, for many, many months before you should even consider having your dog off leash. I know, I know we're in a hurry to get our dogs to be off leash and to have freedom and to enjoy being a dog. I, I get this all the time, but there is nothing better in the world than having a dog that will listen to you while off leash. But it typically takes a, a fair amount of work to get them to that point. So I hope this helps. Really good question. I want you to start with the leave it, look at me combo. I'll have that in the description, that lesson. That is, if that is the first step to teaching your dog to listen to you in a distracting situation. This question comes from Carissa. Is there anything to be done to stop a dog from tinkling when excited? I have several people come to me with this problem. What is the best way to go about this? So Carissa, I'm assuming you're a dog trainer since you have several people coming to you asking you about this. It's odd because it's not so much a training issue. It's not as though you, a dog is saying, oh, I'm excited, let me pee right now. It kind of just happens involuntarily. I mean, you get excited, you pee. It happens to the best of us, right? Right? Most dogs will outgrow this by the age of one year or so. Um, until then, what we want to do is make sure that we get our dogs pee out of them before they are likely to become excited. For example, if you know that you have people coming over, get them outside, get them to get all their pee out of them. Also, a little bit of exercise and play might uh, temper their reaction a bit when people do come over. And while they're still likely to be excited, they may be just less excited enough to not pee. You're looking for improvement on this. There is no magic answer to this issue. You're still gonna have to be tolerant of it. If possible, maybe have the dog greet people outside when they come over. Now, if it's you that's greeting the dog and getting them excited, say you've come home from work after five or six hours and they become excited and usually tend to pee, well, obviously minimize your energy level, act pretty boring, immediately get them outside to pee and do that very consistently for up to a year, I'd say, to make sure that they uh, get the habit established. A related issue is something called submissive urination, which is instead of peeing when they get excited, they tend to get really nervous and pee. Uh, and you would go about this in the same exact way. Both of these are often symptoms of lack of socialization. So it's really common with young dogs who are still in the socialization phase. Also, their bladders become stronger with age as well. Uh, great question, and let's move on to our next one. This question is from Woody. My seven-month-old Brittany Spaniel walks okay on leash in our yard other than biting the leash, but as soon as we get on the other side of the gate, he starts pulling and is only interested in sniffing the ground. He does look at me well in the yard, but seldom does it outside of the yard for treats. Wow, great question. I know exactly what's going on here. At least I think I do. I don't wanna to be too presumptuous. It sounds like you have not appropriately phased in the bridge between the two environments. There's this thing in dog training, it's the craziest thing, that progress doesn't just happen within its own containers. You kinda of have to merge those containers together. So it's extremely common for dogs to be very obedient, to listen to everything you have to say inside the house and then following after that, it's common for them to listen to everything you have to say while in your yard, still a very familiar area, but the moment you get out of your property lines, they're like, who are you? I'm just, this is too exciting for me to listen to you. So a common mistake that a lot of us make when we're teaching our dogs to walk on leash and just behave, relatively desirably is that we attempt to do our main training and our scheduled walk at the same time. At first you really can't get by with that. You want to have two types of walks. You want to have walks where you're strictly focused on training and getting their attention on you from time to time. That sounds like where you are right now. You're trying to get your dog's eyes on you outside of the confines of your property and that's not going well. So what you need to do is take a step back, focus on getting your dog's eyes on you um, while in that, in that really gray area where your dog becomes somewhat receptive to not really receptive. The best way to practice this, I find, is to go in front of your house and walk back and forth just on your own property line, working on look at me, 
working on sit and lie down, all of that in a relatively distraction-free environment. Uh, I say relatively because remember, anytime you change any element of the environment, you're likely to somewhat distract your dog. And the goal is to see that line get bigger and bigger over the next several training sessions where you can get them obedient there. Now, what about when you have to just take your dog on a walk because you wanna go on a walk? In the meantime, be tolerant of the ground sniffing, be tolerant of the pulling. But dogs are still very social, very curious animals, and we need to let them satisfy that to some degree. We don't wanna just make walks a big pain in the butt and have them constantly looking at us or healing in this, this uh, competition-like heel. Let dogs be dogs, but at the same time, phase in more appropriate leash walking over a few months, I would say. Uh, exercise prior to both of these types of training is highly recommended, especially if you have a higher energy dog. Your job will be exponentially easier if you play some fetch or uh, even do some running around with a dog in your backyard before doing leash training. It was a really good question though. If you guys want your question answered by me, feel free to make a contribution on patreon.com slash Zach George. I'll have a link in the description. Thank you so much to all of our patrons who allow us to make bigger and better videos all the time. Subscribe to my channel, especially if you are new here. I'll have a playlist in the description that will show you how to teach your dog all of the basics in order. Take a couple of weeks to go through that and apply what you learn and you'll be in good shape in no time. Remember, that's completely free. I never charge for video content. Set up automatic pet food delivery at petflow.com as well. It'll make your life a lot easier, guys. If you haven't done it already, try it. If you don't like it, cancel it, edit it at any time, but I know you're going to like it. Hey, don't forget to like me on Facebook. We have such a growing big community of dog lovers over there. So it's a great place to be if you're interested in dogs. You guys were amazing, really good questions. Tell me what you all thought of the Q&A format in the comments below. All right, we'll see you next time. In this video, I talked about proofing. Check out my last video for a lesson on that. Of course, a well-structured game of fetch will eliminate most unwanted behaviors. If you need help teaching fetch, I have an excellent video on that topic. If your dog doesn't listen around distractions, check out the Leave It Watch Me combo video. Hey, thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you guys in the next one.